Hello, good morning guys. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make a signet ring. I'm going to make it hollow and we're going to make it parametric. So we're going to start with a finger rail. Uh, let's say size 7. Select the ring rail. Go to tools. Signet advanced builder. Let's change the top shape to let's say something like this. Okay. And then I'm going to use a tool called MSR objects, which is this one over here. But before I do that, I'm going to draw a few spheres around the ring. So just a regular sphere. I'm going to make 1.5 for the first one. That's going to be diameter. I would recommend you put it in another layer. And the most important thing is where you place these spheres. Okay. So you want a sphere slightly bigger at the top. I'm going to show you why in a second. And then we could make new spheres, um, smaller, like 1.2, to be on the sides. So basically, these spheres will be used as a reference for our internal thicknesses. So why do I want the top thickness to be bigger? Why do I want the top of the ring thicker? Because in most cases, you will engrave the top of the ring. So you want to make sure you have a bit of extra metal on top. So on the front view, I want this one and this one. But then on the side view, I want to copy this one over here. That's why I'm copying that sphere on the side. Okay? Don't worry if it looks like this. All you need to know is that you have a sphere here, a sphere here, and this one on the side. Okay. So once I have this, I'm going to use MSR objects. And I'm just going to copy this one to the side and now to the side over here, making sure that it's no um, wider than the space I have for the sphere. Okay. So as you can see, the sides of the ring are fine now. You see? Now the top of the ring, I'm going to scale it down this way more okay and actually this would not be all right because i want to make sure that the bottom of the shank is solid you always want to allow for the bottom of the shank to be solid just in case you need to resize it for example so what i would need to do is scale a bit more and maybe you will need to bring it up a little bit okay so this is fine now so as you can see Actually, I can move it up a bit more. You see? So it, now it's going to be the solid inside. Okay. So I have a smaller solid with the right parameters. So once I'm happy with that, just enter. And now I can go to solids and run a Boolean difference. So that's the first object. Enter. Second object. Enter. And enter. And now I can hide this and I can hide this one. So now my ring, if I want to change the finger rail, is parametric. Okay. I can hide this. This is actually here, so I can just hide it here. And this one hide it as well. So as I was showing you, if I change the finger size, it will update okay so i think we can work a bit further on this model um we could add a plate underneath and still make it 100 percent parametric so let's start i'm just going to use the finger rail i'm going to make an offset between 0.8 and 1 mil i would do it then select both lines Go to extrude, make sure you choose both sides and cap because I want to make a solid piece and make sure when you extrude it, this is very important, that it's wide enough so that it covers completely the inside of the ring. Okay, cool. So that's what we need, still 100% parametric and now we're going to use smart pattern which is here. Select surface, just select this new surface, 
and just choose any of these patterns. I'm going to choose this one, number nine. So this is what I get so far. I don't quite like this. If you see it, it's a cross. So if you see two crosses, it means that it's been repeated twice. So I'm going to change that to one. And now we can see the curve is in the inside. Okay, cool. Then you can basically create any pattern you want. But something you need to bear in mind is that this thickness has to be completely inside this yellow bit. How can I change that? So I'm going to increase the thickness of the actual piece. And then by using this toggle, this slider, I can position it towards the inside. Okay. So like this is fine. Cool. I'm doing this because what I'm going to use is a Boolean intersection. So I'm going to go to solids, Boolean intersection. I can probably choose out of five. Yes, in this case, um, we'll see that later. First surface, this one, and the second set, this one. And that's exactly what we needed. Let's enter. So this is the object that is going to be on the inside of the plate. Of course, we will need to chop it off because we don't want that extra metal in there. I'm going to go with Boolean difference. Sorry, that's the first object, that's the second object. Enter. Okay, this is what I want. Okay. So of course, everything is going to be grouped. You just need to ungroup it. And now I can simply remove the objects that I don't want. But be mindful that the moment I ungroup it, my history will be broken. So I need to make sure. I mean, now it's parametric, the model is done. So at this stage, with everything grouped, if I change the finger size, everything should update. But just try not to ungroup it because ungroup it would unfortunately, in this case, would break history. But see, we'll create a copy, but that's my finger size. See? So that is the new version that I did, that it's size 6. Okay. So if I go back and I make it more obvious, let's make it size 9 or 10 and a half. You would create a new model on top of this one with um, so as you can see here I made a new model and it has everything that I want just in that okay it's just that I would need to ungroup it before at okay, the moment I ungroup it I would be breaking history the model is there. If I remove all these little bits, that's my plate. Be careful with this as well, that might be inside the shank. But yeah, that's how you would make a ring, a hollow signal ring with the plate inside 100% parameter. And that's basically how you would do it. Thank you so much, guys.